Welcome back, you guys. So tonight we're going to be working on salvaging a pre-stippled Glock 19 frame. And what this is, is a local shop contacted me. They let me know that they've got a frame. And uh, what it was is there was a Punisher logo. It's hard to see, but there's a Punisher logo that was on this side and it was on the other side. And they're repurposing the slide and the uh, the frame. So they want to you know do a new pattern on the uh, the frame. They want to go ahead and cut the slide. So we've got a couple different things that we're going to be doing, and you're going to see over the next couple of weeks a uh, pretty heavy 19 build come about, and it, it goes to this frame. But one of the deals is they really just didn't want to send it back, um, you know, to Glock, have it fixed, spend the time, spend the money, things like that. They really needed it turned out some kind of a product that could be sold. So first and foremost, um, what you're going to realize is that the original owner had done his homemade stippling job. And, and if you've seen it once, you've seen it a million times. And what that is, is somebody has a vision, they, they go down that path, and then all of a sudden it turns out being, wow, this is a really bad idea. Um, or maybe their vision wasn't the same as the, the next owners. So all of a sudden you've got, you know, a secondhand firearm and it really doesn't uh, match your uh, theme or your style or, or what you're after. So, um, so now you try to repurpose it. So um, one of the first things I've done here is I went ahead and ran a, uh, my chain link pattern over the, uh, what would be the front grip section here. And, um, and really why I did that was because I wanted this to be still really aggressive. And if we've learned anything from our past videos is that when you do the, uh, when you do the laser stippling over an existing uh, pattern, it comes out more of your traditional texturized, uh, more aggressive approach. So if you haven't seen this video at the end of this, um, at the end of the video, I'll have a link to this one. And this is one of our first uh, samples that we ran. So um, this is a really cool video. There's a lot of information. We talk about a lot of different things and different polymers and things like that. So, um, but, but what I've learned so far, and I, and I am new to the market of laser stippling, but the preparation is key to the success of the product. So um, I ran this on here pretty deep and I wanted to see how it would come out. And I still wanted these to be somewhat aggressive for the hand here. Um, we're not gonna be laser stippling what's, what's gonna be the front uh, grip section or the back strap section. So we're only gonna be correcting the sides to get rid of that Punisher. And I have got, uh, I'm a little bit ahead of you guys. Um, and I apologize, but I went, what I did was I went ahead and ran a trace outline on where the um, actual pattern's gonna go on here and um, a real light one. And then what I did was I started sanding this down to remove uh, what was a, a much deeper punisher on this side. So I, I went ahead and, um, and tried to do a correction on this the best I could to get it all cleaned up. And, and I'll add a picture here in a, in a moment that'll show you a little bit better what I'm talking about. Um, and then the, over here, there was the uh, existing Glock square that has the, the GLOCK right, written out here. So I wanted that to all be kind of smoothed out. Um, one of the things I'm worried about a little bit here is how deep did they go originally when they did the first stipple job. So I'm going to be real careful and probably not go quite as deep as what I normally would because I don't want to go into the inside of the, uh, the frame at all. So we're going to be a little um, cautious on exactly what we're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up the rest of the... Um, kind of the prep work here to get this somewhat smooth. And then um, I'm gonna take you guys through the process of running this uh, this actually chain, chain link pattern on this side. And then we'll bring it back and do a little comparison and then, and then we'll run this side. So um, guys, let me get you guys over to the laser and uh, let's run that. All right, guys, well, we finished up this side over here and I wanted to do just a real quick um, recap on this side. I've got some, some thoughts that uh, I'd like to give to you guys on this. And, and first and foremost, um, the, the main things that stand out to me uh, is the, uh, the little, little tiny um, bumps that are all the way down and through here. I think a lot of that came from the original uh, style of stippling that was on here. 
and I was hearing a lot of cracking and popping noise, which I don't typically hear. So I believe that as somebody was creating this pattern, they were you know, poking it down through there and then right next to it, they were poking another hole and it was probably sealing some air up in there. Of course, I sanded this down the best I could. It wasn't 100% smooth. I got it just, you know, shave down the best we could get it. And, and the other thing is I really couldn't keep going and going and going because we had to peel off that top layer that was here. So it was one of those deals where I can't, you know, just keep shaving it and shaving it and shaving it until it's flat because eventually we will probably poke through the inside and then we will have destroyed the frame. And, and at that point, we kind of have a lost project here. So one of the other things that I'll notice or I want to point out to you is that there's a height difference between the uh, laser engraving and the hand stippling and how kind of rough they are around the edges. Um, I'll encourage the local shop to take a, a tool by hand and go back through and blend those two. Um, we got that because uh, obviously the outside was already pre-stippled and we had to shave this down. So we lost a lot of um, what would be height here on this plane uh, versus the side. So it's hard to see and you can't, you can't really see it, but um, there's definitely a difference between the two of them here. And then of course, obviously in our, in our low side here, we're even lower. So um, it kind of comes out being one of those where it's definitely easy to tell that it's um, not kind of really that uniformed, as I would say. But um, overall, I'm pretty pleased with the way it came out. Uh, considering it being a salvaged project. I mean, that's kind of what we're after was to uh, to not have an issue um, with correcting the, the uh, Punisher. So, you know, we want to remove that Punisher that was on there, but we didn't want to damage the, the frame. So a uh, tricky situation. But um, guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take you over to the uh, the left side and let's run that so we can go ahead and get rid of that Punisher that's up on there and um, we'll bring it back. We'll take a look at it before we're all done. Right, guys well I am extremely pleased with the end result uh, versus what we started with now one of the things to keep in mind here is this was a, a course of correction okay so you know how it is whether you're a gun shop or you're an individual what ends up happening is you get something secondhand somebody had that vision and now we're here to try and fix it to make it you know either an acceptable appearance or a resellable item whatever the case may be um, you know really it's it's really difficult to do uh, a correction over a stipple job because there's so much material that has to be removed you know we don't want to puncture any holes down through there so um, it's really nice to know that the laser can take care of some of that I mean I think that this is to a point where this a lot of this could be blended together this could probably all be sanded probably be painted back to black and it's gonna look a lot more presentable uh, in comparison to you know having the Punisher on the side that really doesn't match anything and, and wasn't straight and and things like that so um, but we've all been there before. We've all said, oh, I think I've got a really good idea. Let me get my soldering iron. And then all of a sudden you do it and you're like, hmm, maybe I should get another lower. I'm glad P80 lowers are out. <laughs> because, uh, you know, what we had what we had as our good intention doesn't always come out being that way. So, um, you know, it is what it is, but sometimes there's some learning experiences there. And, and for me, it's the same thing. I'm still learning because I have to go behind somebody that's already done a stipple job and figure out how to sort that and solve that problem out. So um, it's kind of it's kind of the same thing. Uh, overall but one of the things I noticed with this style pattern was I got a lot of these little bumps that are down and through here now I do experience that on standard Glocks that don't have any stippling done where there um, there's a, a little here or a little there but it's it's never been like to this degree so I'm sure that a lot of that has to do with the um, the makeup of the plastic has already been you know 
heated and then it, it hardened or it's been moved and there's air pockets. There's lots of, once you start changing the, the overall uh, texture of the actual polymer, you know, you're going to start getting different results, obviously. So um, that's one of the reasons why I think we're experiencing that. But guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys outside and uh, get some pictures. And let's go ahead and take a look at these pictures. And um, I want to show you a couple other things. I want to talk about the, um, the gun show that's coming up. And if you're local to me, come by and see me. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these pictures and just uh, we'll see what we come up with. All right, guys, as you're checking out these pictures, I wanted to talk to you about how a project unfolds. Now, one of the things you'll hear me say at the beginning of a project is, um, we're gonna do this, or we're gonna do that, or I believe it's this, or maybe I believe it's that. But what you don't understand is that I may record part of this, work through this project, days may pass by, weeks in some cases, and then I pick it up, complete it, turn it out to you guys. So you might hear me double my wording or say this, or um, you know, I may explain something one time and it seems as though five minutes later I'm explaining the same thing again. Because I've lost my train of thought over the course of this duration of making this video. So on some of those things, I apologize. Um, in other cases, I may start with a project and it kind of shifted or changed, uh, whether that was something to do with the customer's idea or something to do with uh, we had an issue with the project. And then what ends up happening is, is we shift gears and we make a change halfway through it. And sometimes I get you guys that are like, well, you said this at the beginning, but you said this at the end. and it ends up coming out the way it comes out because I'm still trying to turn the content out to you, but it may not be um, done, you know, in in a straight line as far as you know my schedule goes, if, if that kind of makes sense. So um, I apologize for that if it comes up being that I repeat myself uh, several times over the course of a couple of minutes for you guys. Um, there's nothing I can do about that other than you know stop making videos, I guess. But um, guys, a couple of things I want to talk to you about is uh, we have a gun show coming up which is next weekend, or I should say this coming weekend, and it's local to, to uh, North Carolina. So if you're in North Carolina, you have an opportunity to come out, see us, um, go on to our uh, Facebook page, because on our Facebook page, we're actually gonna have uh, like where, we are, where we're gonna be at in the uh, actual show, like right side or left side. We'll try to navigate you guys a little bit better to, uh, to easily find us. And, um, and then of course, if you're following us on Instagram, you'll find out that yesterday, uh, the video of this actually came out and um, you got to see a little bit of a sneak peek before we actually talked about it and actually did the entire uh, project. So um, follow us on Instagram. We go by the exact same name. If you're having an issue finding us or you're just not sure, um, go to our webpage, ncengravers.com. At the very bottom, you're going to see three different buttons, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Those are direct links to us, so you don't have to go and try to search for us. You can just go there and, and locate us almost immediately. Um, a couple of the other things I want to talk about is uh, this was kind of a rough project for me because we hadn't done a complete frame just yet so you guys are kind of looking at me uh, as doing some of the stippling with the laser and you're kind of going eh, I'm not really sure you know it'd be one thing if we had several patterns that we've already released and this was a correction but we're kind of doing things in different order and um, and we have another one so I had a buddy that came over he brought uh, he brought me a frame and said hey is there anything you can do with this this is one of those ones that I had a great idea at one point in time and um, I have since moved on and, and received a couple other frames and I thought you could play with this. Now, the cool thing about that is um, I can take samples off of this, okay? So what I mean by that is I'm able to actually do some of the tracing outline with the laser. I can actually take some notes, all to my CAD programs, um, things like that to get an exact fit uh, match for each side. So one of the things you're going to find out about the laser stippling as far as it goes for me is that every time I run one I'm going to evolve the pattern better and better and better and better until it's what I would consider to be somewhat perfected. Um, it's only going to get so you know so great with the laser um, until you branch out and you try new techniques and things but what I'm saying is is that if you look at this pattern here being one of the first ones I've done some of these are kind of square cornered and things um, I have already changed a lot of the uh, a lot of the pattern for what would be the next go round and um, and that's just how we're gonna be so as you watch these videos unfold you're going to see that these these are going to somewhat evolve and turn into what would be more uh, I guess I would say uh, modified patterns or something that's just a little bit more uh, appealing overall. So guys, but with that being said, since we've, we've started with some stuff that's broken and we needed to fix it, I also wanted to show you that I have one that's completed. Um, I didn't take you guys through this process, so I apologize about that. A couple people have actually had this in their hand already and they were like, wow, this is really grippy and I'm liking it a lot. Um, 
We will have this out at the show. Um, it's it's probably not going to be for sale, but we're going to try to have a couple different samples out at the show uh, with different patterns on them, and uh, you know just give people an opportunity to see what they um, what they could be purchasing as far as a service goes. So I would definitely encourage you if you're local to North Carolina and you have a free a free minute or on Saturday or Sunday this coming weekend, come out in there and see us. Ask those questions. Um, you know, play with the stuff. See, you know, you've seen the video now. Now it's time to play with uh, with those items. So, um, but guys. Follow us. So if you like the content, um, subscribe. If you uh, want to see the little tidbits here and there, maybe don't have time to watch the entire videos, Instagram's kind of the place to go because we're going to put some small stuff out there um, that's going to kind of just keep you updated. And then, of course, uh, our Facebook is kind of just the where and the when. So you can get to figure out like uh, what shows and where and, and how we're going to be there and maybe some of the new stuff that we're working on um, as we get our new uh, machine in. So, um, But guys, have a good one, and I hope to see you this weekend. And um, everyone stay safe.